So we just finished up uh, and the head and shoulders, correct? Mm -hmm. So now we need to move into prone. So there's a lot of, well not a lot, but there's some ways of efficiently uh, transitioning and having the person move into prone. And the one I've been using the most is this one. So uh, could you turn over this? <laughs> <laughs> so that works pretty well most of the time. Now, you know, a couple of things when the person is in prone, you might, uh, this might be a bad position for them with their head turned to one side. So what we've done in the past is put like a bolster or a pillow underneath the chest, use the face cradle to keep the neck neutral. So uh, we'll look at all those different options uh, next time. I just thought uh, this afternoon is I wanted to show you some general back loosening uh, and then have you exchange and do that and then we can end class because it's been a nice full class. You've done a lot of technique. I don't want to uh, overburden you if I haven't already. Uh, so uh, in this position, so we're going to start with uh, the back. Uh, arm position is important. Would you like a bolster underneath your uh, ankles? Yeah. Sure, why not? So we're going to start with some compression. And I'm going to move the arm up out of the way. And then come here. Just uh, as a little something, with the arm in this position, this is how we're going to do the yang meridians next class of the arm. Because there's three yang meridians of the arm, and they start in the hand and go through the arm and end here. So this is a perfect position to access those yang meridians. Uh, but our intention here is for the back. So we're coming about halfway between the neck and the sacrum. That uh, we're feeling for the spine and we're going to be reaching across the spine. So we're going to use the palm of our hands, and this top hand is called the mother hand, and it's stationary. And it goes in between the spine and the vertebral border of the scapula, and it stays stationary. And this other hand comes right below, and you have the person inhale. And on the exhale, you're compressing down and away as you rock up on your knees. So you're letting all your body weight come in leaning in and on the exhale. So you keep your arms nice and extended, and you're leaning in on the exhale. So you get that sense of not only compressing down, but slightly away from the spine, creating some space. And you want to take that compression onto and include the sacrum, because when you start looking at the uh, bladder meridian, you'll notice how there's uh, the bladder meridian runs through the sacrum quite a bit. So. And then you want to pick this hand back up and do it again. Pressure's okay? Mm -hmm. Rocking up on your knees is pretty key because it allows you to get let your body weight sink in. Now, depending on your uh, height, if you're taller, and you can check this out, it might behoove you to be away from the body a little bit. So you're going to have to try to make that adjustment depending on your height. Okay, so that's nice compression here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to step over. And we're going to take our fingertips and just some nice loosening here. Some nice compression onto the back of the scapula. Because what we're going to do is we're going to encourage a little movement and mobilization. So I'm taking my hand with my fingers flat, not curled, and cupping the front of the humerus. My arm is extended, and I'm going to mobilize the scapula in this position by simply leaning back. And to add to that, I'm going to take my fingertips and put them right up against the scapula so that they get some nice digital compression at the attachments of rhomboids, but also it works, starts working the bladder meridian. Because the bladder meridian, part of it runs right on the inside of the scapula. It's a nice, easy mobilization. Okay. And then we're going to switch hands. So this outside hand does the mobilization. Now I'm going to switch hands. 
and I'm going to take the palm of my hand and go right, <laughs> right below the inferior angle of the scapula, and I'm going to in have the person inhale, and on the exhale, as I lean back and mobilize, I compress with this hand, so it's like a twisting compression. And you're compressing on the exhale, and just letting your weight sink into the body and, and ultimately into the sacrum. And then for transition, move this arm up, and come over, and you repeat same thing. So inhale, please. When you're doing this compression, then the top hand stays stationary, but you want to try to get even pressure between both hands. So just because this top hand is stationary, it should get about the equal amount of pressure as the more active yang hand. If you were looking at these hands in yin-yang, the stationary still hand would be more yin, and the active, more descending hand would be yang. Taking that compression down and including the sacrum. And you're going to step across. Bring the arm back. Could you turn your head? And, <laughs> and you want to do the fingertips here, loosening top of the shoulders. Some nice compression onto the back of the scapula, dressing infraspinatus, posterior deltoid. And then this outside hand with the fingers flat, cupping the head of the humerus on the front of the body, arm extended, and then this mobilization is simply by leaning back. And then you can take your fingertips and put them right up against the vertebral border of the scapula and then do nice mobilization. Lean in, I inhale, move my fingers to another place, and on the exhale, I move back. Switch hands, and I use that mobilization and compression. Class purposes today, we're going to end with this compression. So, I'm just going to hook our fingers up on the top of the shoulders and just lean back just to give them some nice digital compression up to the top of the shoulders. And then we're going to start a compression down the back. And this area here is dictated by the space, this space is dictated by the shoulder blade. So there's not a lot of space here, so commonly we'll do what's called a prayer hand uh, compression, which is simply using your hands like this, but using a, leaving enough space so that it's on either side of the spine. <coughs> so inhale this. And on the exhale, you compress into that space. That way you're compressing right into the soft tissue and not the bone. When you get below the inferior angle of the scapula, which is commonly around T7 or T8, you can open your hands and continue the compression here, all the way down. If this position is too compromising on your wrist, you can do flat hand, or flat fist compression. So it keeps your uh, wrist in a more neutral position. But you want to take that compression down and include the sacrum, and we'll end by not only compressing into the sacrum, but compressing and bringing it back towards their feet because that opens up their lower back. And we want to leave a nice lingering uh, impression of openness at the end of our session usually. You can just hang out there for a little bit. Okay, and we'll just 